I don't want to flood the market with more brand names. I want to flood the market with better ideas, right? That's my whole entire concept around what I'm doing, you know? But oh, that's a thousand percent true. Like my, my girlfriend and I talk about my business, my podcast all the time. And whenever you come up and I always say, uh, I always say Ryan. I don't say podcast prince. Mm-hmm. I say, you know, the guy I want to be like, you know, whatever. <laughs> I, I, say, I say the words. Funny, but I, but I, but I say it specifically on LinkedIn because I say I'm a fan of you on LinkedIn. To be honest, I don't listen to your podcast. I don't consume any of your content other than LinkedIn. And you would consider the one thing we talked about in our last podcast, you consider me a listener, which I think is smart because I am, yep. because I listen to your stuff. Yeah, or you're an audience LinkedIn. member slash yeah, fan, I would member. say. There's levels to the fan base. I mean, it's like, yeah, there's like diehard fans that come to my shows that buy tickets. It's like, you yeah. know, that's that's a whole different person, you know? Right. But it's with, with LinkedIn, uh, your LinkedIn strategy is interesting. Because there's a lot of I, I call LinkedIn sometimes the fakest website on the internet, uh, because <laughs> yeah. no one will ever no one ever gets like controversial. You, you'll swear every now and then, um, but like you're mm-hmm. you're very authentically you on yep. LinkedIn. So how do you go? How do you create your brand identity on LinkedIn? And I'll get a little more specifics after following. Yeah, sure. I mean, I I love talking about this by the way because this is what I do every day. Like I sell podcasting, but I build brands. I build you know, I guess businesses through brands, right? But I've built my own brand. So like, that's what I'm spending the most time doing, uh, especially on a day-to-day basis. At first it was uh, nothing, like at first there was no strategy. At first it was just, I, I, ha- I have not done this. I need to go back to my posts. Like I have not seen a post, one of my first posts ever, ever in, in the whole, in the last three years, I've never gone back to, to read them. So I need to do that. That would be a good exercise, but I didn't have a strategy. Um, I mean, in the beginning I called when I was forming the company, I called Sandy Smolens. He's the founder of Audiation, you know, uh, James, I got in contact with from Sweetfish, um, Tristan from Motion, like all of the guys who ran these companies, like I talked to all of them, they, you know, some, most of them did give me advice, you know, so I had that. Um, but they weren't actually, I, I did not see many i did not see and this is important for podcasting too i did not see any creator who uh helped people start podcasts any podcast even even a creator with a podcast that i wanted to emulate so i just filled the gap that i thought i saw in the market but i didn't see that gap till later on um but to go back to your question like the initial strategy was just post right just yep. post and then That's I mine. seriously, <laughs> until this year, I did not, I was always commenting, <clears throat> but on this, in this year, and we could go as deep into this as you want, but you know, all of my, you know, getting 150, 200 followers in a day consistently, like not every day, but you know, ha- that happening all the time, getting, you know, 50 to a hundred thousand impressions on my post in a week, like all that stuff. None of that happened until this year, until like there was things that I tweaked about my strategy. Um, but I was just grinding. Like I was just literally just posting, but I made it a bare minimum. Um, I mean, dude, I can run the numbers like in 2022, I didn't, I don't think I was posting on weekends back then, but it was five days a week, every single week, yep. guaranteed, no questions asked every yep. single day. Every day I was engaging too, like every you single day. To. Like yeah. I took days off, like I would take a day off and not <clears throat> schedule a post. Now I'll schedule a post if I do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, really as what I'm doing now is I'm really, I think personally finding my voice in content creation and finding my niche on LinkedIn specifically, really finding who I am. Somebody commented today and they said, I really like the tough love motivation. And like, that's me, dude. Like I am not the guy to sit there with you and be like, it's okay. It's going to be fine. Like I'm the guy to be like, dude, get up off your ass and let's do it. Like I I'm literally talking to a CEO of an 800 person company and I don't have any NDAs. So I can say this, I won't mention his name. And he's like, I don't know if my podcast idea is going to work. Right. It's like, Dude, nobody knows what they're doing. Everybody needs help. CMOs, CEOs, you name it. So, and I'm, you know, I didn't see anybody doing that. I saw nobody speaking to those people or nobody telling you the realities of podcasting. They were all telling you, you know, uh, they were either too far into the numbers or they were too far into the strategy. And I like the cultural, right? I like the mix of the cultural with, um, with the stats, with the trends, you know, with the differentiator, like we're going to take a marketing podcast and flip it on his head. And instead of talking about successful campaigns, we're going to talk about the least successful campaigns and the failures or whatever. Like that's what gets me hyped up. And, I just basically didn't, I literally saw people talking about one of the most creative mediums in the least creative way. And so that became kind of, I guess, part of my strategy. 